Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inuzor Education. Um, I would like to talk a little bit more about refraction of light, <coughs> primarily from from the viewpoint of uh, Huygens' principle, which we have discussed in the previous lecture. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. Um, well, actually, this course um, is the second one. There is a Math for Teens, which is definitely um, a, a mandatory knowledge to study physics. So I do recommend you to familiarize yourself with whatever topics Math for Teens contains before you go to Physics for Teens, or maybe from any other source. doesn't really matter what, what's the source of your knowledge is. Um, now, this is um, the lecture, it's part of the um, lectures dedicated to properties of light. In this particular case, we are talking about phenomena of light, if you wish. Well, just nice word, I would like to. Um, okay, so, we talk about refraction. It's not the first time um, uh, we discuss this particular um, topic. And the previous time, talking about just general properties of light, we discussed something which is called um, the Fermat's principle of least time. So when the ray of light goes um, to some kind of a substance um, from, let's say, from air to glass, it changes the direction. And according to Fermat's principle, this is um, the trajectory when the light can reach from this to this in the least amount of time. Because if you will go along the straight line, you see this piece, which is in the glass, considering the speed of light is greater in the air than in the glass. So look what happens in this particular case. We are spending less time in the air, but greater time in the glass when we go straight. And apparently, if you will do calculations, uh, which we did in that particular lecture, you will find out that actually there is a, this, th there is a connection between these two angles angle of incident and angle of refraction. And the relationship is their sinuses are related as speeds of light <coughs> as speeds of light in these corresponding substances. So this angle is greater than this because the speed in the air is greater than speed in the in the glass. Or we introduce something which is called refraction index, um, which is um, the ratio of the speed of light in the vacuum divided by speed of light in a particular substance. So the, uh, the less speed um, of the light in the substance corresponds to a greater um, refraction, uh, index of refraction. So in this particular case, that would be n2 divided by n1. Or if you wish, n1 times sine theta1 is equal to n2 times sine eta theta2. So these are the laws of, refra of refraction, which we have um, derived from Fermat's principle of least time. So this is the least time trajectory of light. And we came up to these formulas analytically, just based on minimization of the time. Now I would like to approach exactly the same problem um, using the Huygens principle. Um, now, here, here is kind of philosophical consideration. Um, Fermat uh, just came up with this principle. Now, why is it right? Well, obviously we can say that experiments actually confirm that this is kind of correct. But if we have some other principle, 
also reasonable. Now, Fermat's principle is reasonable, that's why we accepted it. Now, the Huygens principle is also a principle which we just accept, because it looks like it corresponds to experiments. But it would be nice if the results are the same. And that's what this particular lecture is about. We will approach the same problem from the position of Huygens principle, and we will come up with the same result. Okay. We got our aim. Let's try to do it. Now, when we talk about Huygens principle, we usually talk about the wave front. So what is the wave front? Well, let me just say it again. If you have certain um, rays of light which are coming from either um, flat surface or if it's a, um, a point as a surface, then it would be spherical. So these are surfaces which the light reaches at the same time, because light is actually propagating. Now, in this particular case, it's a spherical propagation. In this particular case, it's a flat plane propagation. But in any case, there is certain speed of light, and the wave front is when the same crest, let's say, of the um, of the wave, which basically describes the light, um, its transverse oscillations of electromagnetic uh, field. So whenever, let's say, the crest is reaching a certain point. So basically when we are talking about the surface um, to which all the rays are coming at the same time, that is the wave front. In this case it's spherical, in this case it's a flat, flat plane. So, we are talking about the wave fronts. Now, when, when we consider the refraction as before, we were talking about only one particular ray of light. Now, since we are talking about wave front, and the principle, Huygens principle actually is talking about how to derive the next wave of front if you have the previous wave of front. Um, then we talk about more than one ray actually because it's the whole wave. Now let me just remind how Huygens suggested that the propagation of light happens. Well let's say we have a wave uh, uh, front which has reached this particular surface. But he's taking, but he's talking about that at time t plus delta t. Now, from uh, each point where the light has reached on the wave front, in this case it's a flat plane, maybe it's spherical, maybe it's something else. So from each point, we have to really um, uh, build some kind of a circle, the radius of which is equal to speed of light times the delta t time. So, and then we will take the line which is tangented, tangent, tangent to uh, e e each of these circles. Well, it's basically called envelope line, envelope surface in this particular case. So we're talking about, right now, this is a section, two-dimensional section of the three-dimensional uh, picture. So um, the uh, surface which is tangent to all these circles, now if this is one particular kind of uh, environment, then speed is the same for, e for each point, time is also the same, so the radius is the same. So the surface which is enveloping all these circles, well not circles, spheres I should really say, because it's a three-dimensional world, so the surface which envelopes all these spheres of the same radius with a center on the same flat plane will be another flat plane and the distance would be v times delta t. Now that's the principle 
Huygens principle, which we would like to approach with when we are analyzing um, the refraction. But in this case, it would be a refraction of the whole wave front. So we have more than one ray of light. Okay? So let's just consider that this E is the first ray and this is the last ray from some kind of a, uh, let's say we have a projector with a parabolic um, reflector, so it's all parallel ray of light and uh, these are the boundaries and <coughs> it actually falls on incident angle to the surface which separates let's say air and glass doesn't really matter what kind of substances what's important is they are different let's say this one where speed would be faster and this one where the speed of light would be slower so what happens in this case well <coughs> obviously each ray will change the direction I mean we will prove it but basically we kind of assume that that's the case now what, what's also important is if these are parallel and considering the condition this ray is um, uh, falling on the surface the same as this one this one just be a little later but the angle should be the same basically right so if these are parallel these will be parallel because the conditions of these two um, uh, rays of lights are exactly the same it's the boundary between two um, substances and the boundary is a flat plane we're assuming and this is the uh, set of parallel lights so each ray should actually be refracted in the same way but question is what kind of a way so whether this proportion between sinuses would be proportional to the speeds okay that's what we're going to do now <coughs> At this particular moment, I would like to actually um, talk about one particular analogy. Let's consider you have um, a car. Car. It has wheels. And it comes to the boundary between, let's say, uh, concrete and uh, sand well if it comes at an angle like the ray of light what happens this wheel will be on the sand earlier than this one than, than this one now whenever the wheel from concrete comes to sand most likely it will slow down right so what happens when this wheel will slow down at the point when it touches. This one is still going fast on the concrete and this one will go slower. Obviously the car will turn a little bit and only at the moment when both wheels will be, well I should actually all four wheels, but doesn't matter, when, when both sides will be completely on the sand, on, then it will be um, uh, going along the straight line but this straight line will not be the same angle at this surface right so as the car is turning whenever one wheel is slowing down same thing with this set of rays this set of ray this ray from this set is hitting before this one this area where the light is propagating with a lesser speed so that's why we are just as an explanation why refraction actually happens it's exactly the same as this it's a very practical example uh, I think it's used in many different textbooks whenever they're talking about refraction but what's important is to understand that this is natural that the parallel um, parallel rays whenever one of them hits the um, the, the, the surface where the light goes slower will turn a little bit. Alright, so we understand 
and the philosophical reason behind it. Let's talk about physics. <coughs> okay, for, for this we just have to start first with the front. What is the wave front? Well, whenever you have these parallel lights, um, and we are assuming that they are coming from some kind of a projector, maybe with a parabolic uh, reflector, so we have really parallel, synchronously going parallel lights. What is the wave front? Well, the wave front is perpendicular to their uh, propagation. So I would like to draw the front, uh, the wave front, which comes here. So it's perpendicular here and here, obviously. All right. Okay. Now, this is my theta one. This is my theta two. All right. So right now we are talking only about pure physics and geometry. Okay. Now, um, let's call this point A and this point B. Now, I'm interested in two moments. Moment TA, uh, let's call this ray A and this ray B. TA is a moment when the A ray touches the surface. TB is the moment when the B touches the surface. And obviously, it's later. TB is later than TA. Now, so delta T would be TB minus TA. So I'm interested in how the wave front will uh, behave when the B will reach, because this one will definitely be somewhere here. By the time B will uh, reach the surface, the ray will be somewhere here already, right? So that's exactly my delta T is the time uh, uh, of the I, I, I need the time at, at T this is T initial time from um, at, from T to delta T um, is the wave front will change the direction at T it was here at T plus delta T it would be somewhere here where this is also at the right angle, obviously. So during this time, it will certain uh, rays will be refracted, but by by the time uh, the B will touch the surface, all rays will be already in this direction. So that's why I need the wave front at the very end of this period. Okay. So let's say that during this period, during delta T period. So B will be at point B prime, and A will be at point A prime. Now, let's say this distance is D. It's a fixed distance. This is the width of our set of rays. Now, what I would also like to do, I would like to find out how all intermediary rays between A and B will behave. So let's call another C and uh, uh, this would be uh, letter C on the front at point T. And this would be deviated. Okay, and this would be let's say C prime and this would be C double prime. C prime is on the surface and C double prime on the new wave front. So, obviously, all the angles of refraction will be the same because, as I was saying, all the conditions are the same. These, raw, these rays are falling uh, exactly the same way on the surface. Question is whether the line C prime, C double prime, will be of the length proportional to A, A prime. Because if all these are proportional, then it would be a straight line, which I probably assume it will be. And that's what I would like to prove, actually, that that would be a straight line. So the wave front after refraction 
would be also flat, basically, perpendicular to the rays of light. But we have to provide some kind of a proof that these are proportional to the distance. So let's assume this distance is x. So the whole distance is AB is um, D. AB is equal to B and BC is equal to X where X might be variable so D is a fix that's the width of our um, set of rays and the X can be anything in between obviously from 0 to D 0 when this ray is coincided with B and D with if it coincides if ray C coincides with ray, ray A. Okay, so now we go to just plain arithmetic. So first let's just evaluate what is the distance from B to B prime. B B prime is equal to Okay, now this is the distance the light goes during this time with the speed v1. So it's v1 times tv minus ta. Okay. Now, in terms of um, incident angle theta, now this is theta, now this is obviously theta as well, theta 1. Why? Because these are perpendicular, this perpendicular to this, and, and, uh, and this is perpendicular to this. Yes, it should be the same, right? Let me check. No, it's this one would be theta 1. This is 90 degree minus theta 1. But this one is also theta 1. Okay. Yeah, this perpendicular to this and this perpendicular to this. Okay, so ABB prime is a triangle, and we can say that BB prime is equal to what? AB times tangent of theta 1, right? Tangent is opposite to this catheters, so <coughs> knowing that AB is equal to D. So that equals to d times tangent theta 1. From which we can derive tb minus ta is equal to d tangent theta 1 divided by v1. Okay. So these are known variables. We know the incident angle, we know the width of the uh, set of rays, and we know the speed. So we know the time. During this time, exactly the same time, the ray A will go from A to A prime. So A A prime is equal to V2, the speed in the glass, times the same time. D tangents theta 1 divided by V1. Okay. Now, um, we have counted, uh, we have calculated basically the, the uh, length of a, a, a prime. Now, what is this ray? What is this uh, particular distance? Um, according to the Huygens principle, you remember what we have to do. As soon as we reach a certain point of the wave front, from this point we have to really make a sphere uh, with a radius equal to speed times delta t. Okay, delta t is basically this time by which b point will become b, plan, b prime and a becomes a prime. So this is the radius of the sphere um, around point A, where our proposed new um, 
wave front surface should actually touch. So whatever the surface, new wave front surface will be, it should be enveloping uh, this sphere as well. And all spheres in between. So let's just also uh, make a similar calculation for a point C, which is on a distance x from, from B. And let's see what, what happens in this particular case. Well, let's find out the time Tc minus Ta. Tc is the time when uh, ray C touches this particular thing. Okay, now, the distance, this distance, can actually be um, calculated um, from the same well, similar triangle ACC prime and considering AC is equal to D minus X and from ACC prime we see that CC prime is equal to <coughs> AC times tangent which is D minus X times tangent theta 1 from which Tc minus Ta, which is this one, the distance between time uh, of touching, minus, so this is the time during which this particular um, ray C was, was traveling before hitting the point. Now, <coughs> now we would like to um, calculate again the radius. Well, this radius is um, the time times uh, speed. Now, what is the time? Now, the time should be equal to one second, let me just think about it. So, um, during the time uh, ray goes from point B to B prime. This ray goes from A to A prime. But this ray has two components. First component, it went uh, in the air with the speed V1. And the second component, uh, it was with the speed V2. So we have to calculate them separately. Okay. <coughs> so first we know the distance between C to C prime. That's okay. And we know the time from C to C double prime, right? So let's just calculate this distance. So first period of time from TC to TA, this time I have actually just determined. Now what I do need is the additional time, which is the whole delta T minus TC minus TA. It was traveling here which is equal to Tb minus Tta minus Tc minus Ta, which is Tb minus Tc. <coughs> well, actually, I'm not exactly right. Yes, Tb minus Tc, right. So, Tc is earlier and Tb is later, so that's okay. Right, so this time it was actually traveling <coughs> with the speed uh, of V2. So, that means that this particular distance, C prime C double prime, is equal to, <coughs> sorry, my voice, V2 times Tb minus Tc. 
Okay, which is equal to. Okay, now since I know the CC1, I know this is equal to CC prime divided by V1, which is equal to D minus X tangent theta 1 divided by V2. So we know this, and we know this. So if I will subtract from this, I will subtract this, what happens? From this, I subtract this, so D tangent would be cancelled out, and the result will be TB minus TC is equal to X tangent theta 1 divided by V1. If you subtract from this, you subtract this, D and tangent uh, denominator is the same, and in denominator tangent goes out, so D will, will cancel out and only X will remain. So this is um, the time during which the light C, ray C, will travel this. So if I will multiply it by speed, uh, it would be this, which is equal to x times tangent theta 1 divided by v1 and multiplied by v2. So this is the radius of the sphere from the point C prime. Now, let's just think about this formula. If my C coincides with A, X is equal to D, and you see this formula and this formula are exactly the same, if X is equal to D. We have V2 multiplication, multiplication V1 is denominator and tangent theta 1. If C coincides with B, <coughs> my x is equal to 0, and obviously the sphere is 0 because this is the point where we know that the wave front should go through. So as you see, it's proportional to the distance from, from ray, uh, C to rate B. So C can be like a variable. So whenever the variable is, whenever, whatever, the vari whatever the variable x actually is, we have this radius proportional to, to this distance. Now, what does it mean? Well, it means that our line, which is, well, surface, sorry, surface, would be a flat surface. Because if the radiuses of these spheres are proportional to the distance, to the this distance or this distance, it doesn't really matter because it's all parallel lines. So proportionality gives us exactly the result that it would be, in a section, it would be a straight line. Okay, so that's the most important part of it. Now let's talk about um, the law of refraction. If we know this, Then one little trigonometric trick. <coughs> um, what is uh, now? This is my theta two. Okay, fine. So what else is theta two? Um, this one. Yes, this one is also theta 2. Because this is perpendicular to the ray, and this is perpendicular to normal. And from the triangle AB prime A prime, A B prime A prime, what can we see? That the sinus sine of theta 2, sine of this angle, is equal to opposite catheters A A prime divided by A B prime. Right? 
the gadgetus divided by hypotenuse. Now a a prime we know, which is this. So sine of theta two is equal to v two d tangent theta one divided by v one divided by a b prime. What is a b prime? a b prime is a hypotenuse. I know this distance, this catheter and an angle. So this uh, angle divided by hypotenuse is equal to cosine. So hypotenuse is equal to um, so instead of a b prime I will put a uh, hypotenuse which is d divided by cosine of angle so I will multiply it okay divide it in the denominator I will put it in numerator which is equal to what d is cancelling out tangent is um, sine divided by cosine and multiplied by cosine so it would go on the sine theta 1 from which as you see you have exactly the same refraction law that v2 divided by v1 is equal to sine theta 1 divided by sine theta 1 exactly the same law or again you can re rewrite it as v1 divided by v2 is equal to sine theta 1 divided by, by sine theta 2 or again if you use the refraction index index of refraction refractal whatever it's called um, that would be again instead of v1 you can put c divided by n1 instead of v2 you can put um, c divided by n2 and that would be sine divided by sine or n2 times sine theta 2 would be n1 times sine theta 1 in any case so all these are exactly equivalent and what's important is we have proven the um, uh, refraction law uh, law of refraction law of refraction which we have derived using the Fermat's principle of uh, least time using the Huygens principle so it actually again means that considering it's all actually corresponding to um, experimental facts so it all actually brings us to the idea that those guys were smart they came up with really good principles and obviously every principle has its draw points has its negative sides but nevertheless whatever we know about universe is always an approximation we don't know everything <coughs> but whatever we did know at the time when these two principles were introduced were really a very very good ideas and they allowed basically to theoretically understand certain things about light okay so that's it that's all I wanted to talk about today uh, don't forget to read the notes for this lecture every lecture on the uh, on this website has very detailed notes because it's like a textbook basically but piece of the textbook which is dedicated to the same material the lecture is so lecture and notes uh, are are always together plus I put some uh, better pictures than this one uh, in the notes so whenever you will read the notes you you might actually have a better understanding of what's going on and don't forget that analogy with a car when the car goes with one wheel actually is reaching uh, descent um, earlier than another wheel then the car will turn I think it's a very important uh, to understand the principle of refraction. Other than that, you got it.
Thank you very much and good luck.